joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. You never know what you might find in your backyard. We've all heard the occasional story about someone who's dug up an old treasure chest of valuable coins or perhaps some antiquated military equipment. Well, today's guest has found these things and more. Bill Donlin of Enosburg, Vermont, got a metal detector as a gift six years ago. His finds now include artifacts that date back as far as the Revolutionary War and the Civil War, all found in Franklin County. Bill is with us this afternoon to highlight some of the treasures that he's unearthed. He's also interested in sharing that knowledge of metal detecting with anyone who's interested in learning. So thanks so much for coming in. And before we get started, there is a golden rule to this work that you do. Can you just say that right off the bat? That's well, you really need to be forward up front and center with, with landowners and homeowners when you talk to them. You really want to get your permission first. Sure. And then you want to have an agreement about what's going to happen with these items that you may potentially find about what's going to happen with them. Um, right. And, and in fact, you usually, anything that you do find when you get permission and you, and you do the detecting, mm -hmm. uh, you give them to the landowner and in some cases to a museum or a, a historical society, yeah. right? It uh, depends if they're of consequence. You may want to think about doing some preservation work to perhaps save some of these, hmm. either with, through electrolysis or maybe a uh, like a ultrasonic cleaning. Hmm. Great. And and if clearly, if you're detecting, probably finding something really special very early yeah. on will hook you. And that happened to you when it was your fifth hole. You dug up something spectacular. Yeah, it can really grab a hold of you. <laughs> so, so what was what was that treasure that you found? Well, this is like the the fifth hole that I dug on my home. I just had a real small introductory model. It was like a bounty hunter 1100, only a six inch coil. Mm -hmm. And like I say, uh, this this was like an old depression that had been in the lawn for years, and I got this real sweet sound. And uh, this happens to uh, be a uh, with research, of course, you don't know what it was when you're firstly starting out. So right. with research, I found out, with, you know, my wife's really good with a computer, so, you know, we can, internet's available for so much information and talking to music curators. This is sure. a Loyalist cross belt plate. It's brass. Uh, it has a crown and the GR in really old script. The GR is, stands for George's Rex or King George. Hmm. Um, this would be from, of course, from Revolutionary War, 1776 to 1783. And this was a payment to, to somebody, uh, clearly. And yeah, it would have been amazing. a man who had served as, and really was a loyalist. Yeah. His, his feelings were for the British. And sometimes you <coughs> found some incredible things, and that's, and that's one of them. But yeah. also, much of what you find is everyday, mundane things, mm -hmm. but from a long time ago. So here, here are just some very typical things that you might find. Yeah. Um, this would be around a real old home site. You might find things like buckles, like there's like I can see a uh, part of a gold uh, watch case, mm. you know, spoons, skeleton keys, uh, iron rings. You may find modern day coins, but uh, with luck you might find a piece of old jewelry, like huh. a ring or uh, huh. yeah, that one lore item we see with the two holes. That's yep. actually a, a European uh, press and box iron. They were made of tin, and usually they had two of those at a time. As huh. one was warming up with an iron slug inside, and the other one was being used. Oh, oh, so interesting. And you learn about all of these things at yeah. the same time. Oh, yeah. And, and to get back to some of the unusual, just to keep, keep going, there is a Vermont medallion that you found. Can you tell us something yes. about that? That's uh, happened to be out behind a uh, home in Enosburg, which is used now as a bed and breakfast. Um, hmm. He uh, did a lot of work there for uh, charity work for uh, Civil War veterans at the time with different reunions. This what it, we have is a medallion of the Vermont chapter of the Grand Army of the Republic. Would have been a Civil War veteran who had paid his dues and he happened to lose this. This is a be mm. very beautiful seal of the, our Vermont state. That's fantastic. And you clearly do a lot of research and you work with a lot of professionals mm -hmm. a, as well in, in really digging things up. Howard yep. Coffin, who we know, and, yep. and, and other people. How, how they must be thrilled that you're doing this work. 
Uh, it's, I've, uh, on occasions, I've had to bring an item or two to uh, our state archaeologist, Jess Robinson, right. to, for a review. Uh, uh, some of these items I have taken to Howard Coffin for him to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's like, uh, it's like um, at points when I'm a little bit challenged with the preservation, I have mm. conferred with uh, um, Chris Sabic at the uh, Champlain Maritime Museum for uh, preservation help. And uh, even uh, Alex Lenning, like at the uh, St. Albans Historical Museum, he, he's been the beneficiary of some donations. Well, and you were asked to detect at the site of the Missisquoi Bank, which was part of the St. Albans raid. Yes. Uh, so what did you find there? What, that must be exciting. Well, we've had a lot of history in here, Vermont, that's Civil War related. Mm. Um, this just happened to be with the Confederacy, but over 10% of our state actually served in the Civil War. So many of these sites and, and places where I do go, I happen to recover Civil War related items. This particular thing actually was the coin I recovered at the site of the old Missisquoi Bank in Sheldon. Um, this is a uh, British halfpenny, 1831, and uh, it would have had King William IV on, on the front of the coin. Huh, amazing. It's probably the last withdrawal from that bank. <laughs> and um, any, anything yeah, be, before it was not British anymore? Yeah. Or Yep. Okay, and anything else from, from the raid that you, that you found that you think came from that St. Albans raid, which wasn't a lot of people or... Okay, um, there's that, there we go. There we go, there we go, the bullet casing. Yes, I recovered four old Rimfire cartridges, and there were two large ones and two small ones. And the start of my, my very careful cleaning, the uh, first large cartridge had a CSA in the top part and also a large six and a capital A. The other three also had the six and A designation. Like it had been marked on the tops of these cartridges with the tip of a lead bullet. That's what I think happened. So, so what was that, soldiers doing that when they're waiting around board <laughs> for orders well, or something? Well, with what do you re think? research with the uh, blue and the gray chronicles about the biographies of these uh, Confederate raiders. There was four members who participated in the St. Albans raid on that day, and they were the Kentucky Cavalry, 6th Regiment, Company A. Uh, their names were uh, Bruce, Dottie, <laughs> um, Lackey, and Mock. Wow, you go pretty deep. And they came, they came yep. down and, yep. and um, tried to get money by robbing the banks. And yeah, they the were bank successful. happened to be locked up that day, but <laughs> on the records recorded in Sheldon history, there were shots fired in the vicinity of that bank on that day. And it's clear that those bullets were from the I, Confederates. I truly believe so because of the, the time period, them being really old yeah. rimfire and the six and the A. It's like they marked them, these four men, says, I was here. Right, wow. So um, it's, it sounds like cellar holes are great for detecting. Yeah. Yeah. And in an East uh, Enosburg cellar hole, you found something carried by a Union Army soldier. Yeah, what we uh, have here is a, uh, a smooth uh, base canteen. It has a pewter spout. And this was like a standard issue for our, our Union soldiers here in Vermont. Awesome. And, and there's something else of the site also yielded from a, a Union soldier. Here we yeah, go. that uh, fight in that can canteen really piqued my interest for further uh, examination mm -hmm. around there. And this was found about uh, 30 uh, feet from the foundation down a, a bank. This is a uh, brass eagle accoutrement plate, which would have been on our soldiers' uniforms. Hmm. Uh, this is one of the more commonly discarded items because this sh shiny piece on, on the actual battles, men would discard these because these were a perfect target for snipers. Oh, because they would shine or something, oh, catch yeah. the light, so who wanted that? So um, everything that you find is, is tangible, uh, something that you, c you can touch, but sometimes they're, that doesn't always mean they're real. That's, you that's what, right. Give us an example of that. And here, here uh, I was very lucky and fortunate to also find this at the site of the uh, canteen and accoutrement plate. This is a 1838 uh, half silver dollar. Well, you think it's silver, but actually it was German silver. There was a hole punched 
in, above the head of the coin. At, and the back side of the coin, as you see, is upside down because that actually is a, a face of a 1836 coin. This is counterfeit. So it's a counterfeit coin. That's Probably exactly one right. Used, tried to, somebody tried to use it as uh, I as could money. see what happened at that <laughs> home site. They probably received that as a payment and tossed it next wow, to the stone wall. Sure. Well, you've also uh, ha had a lot of fun. You, you, um, the, the next find is, is from the Art Deco period. Yes. Uh, a really fun little model. Well, when I first came on to this, uh, it was really indistinguishable. It was all rust, and it's like I didn't know what I had and what I was going to do with it. But with research, I found out that this was a, uh, oh my a, little, God. a little model car, right? Yeah. Deco. It was uh, adorable. God, I miss this one here. You, you, you have a specific name for it. I, I think still just the idea that you can find these kinds of things as well as coins is pretty terrific. So we'll, we'll get it up there. Not, not a yeah. problem. So we're almost out of time. Yeah, so it, it came from uh, Michigan. Oh, cool. Uh, I shouldn't remember the name of that. <laughs> it's OK. So uh, quick advice for people who do metal detecting. Yeah, I'd really suggest that you uh, join with some friends that also do it and get to try their detectors so you can be familiar and find one that you like. And I will say, um, if you don't uh, look, you're not going to find things. Okay. And people um, might want to, might be interested in, in, in hiring you. So how do they get in touch with you to help them detect around their house? Yeah, I have my uh, email address. It's in all small captions here. B.C. Donlon, that's D-O-N-L-O-N. 14 at gmail.com. Okay, Bill, thanks so much for bringing your fascinating passion to yeah. um, Across the Fence today, and happy hunting to yeah, you. I'm welcome. And thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Uh -huh.